So in Australia last year, I think there were something like 10,800 melanomas diagnosed. And so Australia has the highest incidence of melanoma of anywhere in the world per capita population. Uh, I think the uh, lifetime risk for a Victorian for getting a melanoma is around about 3%, but the lifetime risk for a Queenslander of getting a melanoma is between 8 and 10%. Overwhelmingly, the, the most important risk for developing melanoma is sun exposure. And sun exposure explains about 95% of the risk for melanoma. So there are some melanomas that can occur in parts of the body that never see the light of day, like the back of the eye or around the genital area. But far and away, the majority of it is caused by sun exposure. So there's different types of melanoma. The most common melanoma is called the superficial spreading melanoma. And that's the one that usually presents as a, as a black mole and that might be a new mole that just appears out of the blue on uh, previously normal skin or it can occur as a change within a pre-existing mole. So you might have one of your moles that's been there benign for many many years, suddenly it starts to enlarge, get a little bit bigger, might change in colour, might even itch or bleed. So they're the, they're the most common form of melanoma and they usually present as the black spots. The melanoma that's perhaps even more dangerous is the nodular melanoma. And that's the one that tends to mainly occur amongst men over the age of 55. And that can often present as a, as a nodule on the skin. It might be black, might be jet black, or occasionally it can be pink with no, no colour in it at all. And those melanomas are hard to diagnose because they don't look like what we're expecting to see with a melanoma. And because of that, the diagnosis is often delayed. And because the diagnosis is delayed, by the time it's removed from the skin, it's often spread to other parts of the body. So the nodular melanoma only accounts for about 20% of all melanomas, but of all the melanoma deaths, about 40 to 50% actually occur from the nodular melanoma. So that's the one that we're really trying to focus on detection of and to really increase community awareness of and also to get the GPs to better understand that if you see a new pink nodule, that you might not automatically, you know, melanoma might not come to mind initially. Just be careful with it, have a close look at it, and if you're still uncertain, they're the ones that need to be, uh, be removed and sent off for histology. Okay, so the, the first thing to do is to listen to the patient. So if a patient walks in and says, I'm concerned about this spot here, have a really good look at it, and you've got to find a reason not to excise it rather than one to excise it. The other thing that's important on history is a history of change. So something that not day to day or week to week, but something that's changing from month to month that's different um, is, is worth a really close look. And then the other things that uh, the GP should be really looking out for is, um, is the, the size and the shape and the colour of the lesion. And there's a whole range of diagnostic algorithms that people use, but I suppose a really good starting point is the GPs need to have a system of how to do a skin check, how to examine a patient so that you don't miss areas because you're much more likely to, to miss a skin cancer, not because you saw it and you didn't diagnose it, but because you didn't check that part of the body. And so you have to have a really good system so that you can examine the patient pretty much from top to toe without missing areas so that you're not going to miss that skin cancer that's hidden away in a site that you might otherwise have missed. There's a number of ways in which GPs can get their, their education and their professional development points. So they can get it from reading journals or they can get it from, uh, from attending lectures like this. One of the, the benefits of the lectures like this is that they're interactive. You get a chance to ask the questions, to explain things that you haven't necessarily understood. And also you can get a sense as to where there's a bit of wobble in the literature. So in other words, the literature doesn't always have all the answers and it often requires a little bit of interpretation so that you can start to individualise your care for your patients. Um, rather than just following the rules blanketly, you can start to take into account patient preference, patient past history, patient comorbidity, skin type, a whole range of other things and you can incorporate that into your treatment plan if you can actually understand how to integrate that. And you, get a, you get a much better chance of developing those, those algorithms here at an interactive forum than you do just by simply reading the, the literature and when it's presented in black and white.